Hi, welcome to Quality of Life Ministries. New Covenant Promise, we're on the second one now, um, which is the Law of the Spirit of Life. And what is that? And so we're going to talk about today, we are doing a series uh, of four on the New Covenant Promises. And if you'd like to watch the other three, uh, they're small videos, and uh, we uh, believe they will be an encouragement to the body of Christ. Um, the Law of the Spirit of Life. First of all, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 and 12. This is where the Lord says a day is coming when I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. Um, I'm going to write my laws into their minds and hearts, and their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And so that is really good news, because Jesus, of course, he does not keep records of wrongs, because he took them all. And so <clears throat> the law of the spirit of life was faith, hope, and love in Christ. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. And so remember that faith, hope, and love is in the body of Christ. And so that is good news, and that's what gospel means, good news. And so we are New Covenant believers. We are under the New Covenant grace. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And so let's go to 1 Corinthians 13.13. 13. If you want to follow along and uh, jot these scriptures down, these are great reference verses to go to, to follow along with us and uh, further study this. But uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, remember, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church here um, at Corinth. These are Gentile Christians in Christ, and he says, now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so let's go ahead and start with faith. First of all, what is faith? You know, um, the law of the spirit of life is faith in Christ. And so let's talk about that. You know, when we think about faith, what do you think about? Well, it's a piece of the armor. You know, Paul, when he wrote to the church at Ephesus, he's talking about putting on the full armor of God. Well, to put on the full armor of God is just to understand or just to get the revelation of the fact that in Christ it is already on. And so the shield of the faith. And that was designed to reflect fiery darts. And so a lot of times we're going to, we have to remember that Christ will never be offended. And that's one of the reasons why he wanted us to get the shield out in front of us. And so the Lord is our strength. And so, um, and that's, that was the purpose of the, uh, the shield of faith. Remember when Jesus and the disciples were on the boat and the storm came? And the storm uh, just about swamped the boat over. And Jesus was asleep. I mean, the water was coming up over the boat, and Jesus was asleep. He was getting soaked, which is amazing. And, uh, you know, he's just so content and so, so relaxed that he's actually sleeping. Well, the disciples are freaking out, and they think they're going to die, and they finally get Jesus up, and Jesus calms the storm, and they all look at him, and Jesus says, Where is your faith? And they're looking right at him. And so remember, the law of the spirit of life is faith in Christ, first of all. And that faith, hope, and love is in the body of Christ, in the church. That spiritual life is now made the church alive. That is the grace of God. And so that's what the law of the spirit of life is. And so remember, before Christ, we were spiritually dead, separated from God. Romans 5.12, and so in Christ we are made alive, and so that's what the law of the spirit of life is. And so, but faith, the law of the spirit of life is faith um, in Christ. And so again, it's the shield of faith, and uh, remember that when we have our shield up in front of us, we're trusting the Lord as our very strength. In fact, the Apostle Paul warned the church about this in Romans 12.3, he said this, he said, don't think of yourself to be any higher than you ought to. And what that, what that means is the body of Christ needs to remember that there are no strong men, there are only weak men who have a strong God. And so as long as we have that, um, we're going to see the Lord as our strength. And so, and so the law of the spirit of life um, is hope in Christ. And remember that hope is in us. And so what is that? You know, Hebrews 6.19. We have this hope as an anchor in our soul, secure and steadfast. It's holding us together. It's holding our soul together. Remember, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. 
And so remember, truth abides in the church and will be with us forever. John writes about this more in 2 John 2. And so if you want to go there, flip over there and check that out, he's talking about Christ actually holds us together. We don't uh, have to freak out when the storms of life come and when the trials come because of that eternal truth holds us together. And so remember that hope is inside the church. And the worst thing to be without is hope. So moving on, you know, there's uh, Colossians 1.27. We have more reference verses here for you. You know, this is where the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Colossae, and he's speaking about a mystery here that uh, has been hidden for centuries and generations, but now is being revealed to the saints that God has chosen to reveal it to, which is Christ Jesus in you, the hope of glory. And so that is our hope, to know that that glory is inside of us, um, the mystery of Christ. Moving on, the law of the spirit of life is also love. Um, and so remember, uh, love is inside the church right now. Um, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and these three remain. Again, I'll repeat this verse because I believe it's important. It is the new covenant where Paul says, and these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And so the reason why this love in us is the greatest is uh, we're, we're going to see that, um, that he wants to produce this love through us, through the church. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So the law of the spirit of life is love in Christ. And so remember, our love needs are met. And so... And, uh, you know, God demonstrates how much Christ really loves us. Remember, Christ Jesus lives in you. He loves you unconditionally. And there's a reason for that, you know. First um, Corinthians, excuse me, you know, the Apostle, um, Apostle Paul is saying that God has demonstrated Christ's very love for us in this, that while we were sinners, he died for us. And so that's Romans 5, 8, where he talks about that. Now, the reason why we respond to Christ's unconditional love in us is because he wants to extend that through us. And so as we respond to his unconditional love, we can ask him to extend that out through us to others. And that's the new covenant commandment. And that's our question, where is the new covenant commandment? And before you say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, let's go to John 13, 34, and 35. Because in reality, he's not saying that at all in the New Covenant um, commandment. The New Covenant commandment in John 13, 34, and 35 is this. He says, love one another as I have loved you. By loving one another, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Now keep in mind, this is a response. So, as I have loved you. See, that's the New Covenant commandment. First of all, is to respond to His love that He has for you and for me, and then we're going to allow Him to extend that through us. And that's what it means to love one another as I have loved you. And so that New Covenant commandment is going to be like breathing. It's uh, effortless. It's not burdensome. It's a response and allowing Him to live His life through us. Now, our role as believers is, first of all, to believe that Jesus died for us so He could give His life to us, so he could express his life through us. And so we have to yield and uh, be available for him to live his life through us. First Thessalonians 5.24 He who has called you is faithful and he will do this. And so remember our role, believer, is to believe in Jesus Christ to live his life through us. So let's, as children of God, um, live from the life-giving spirit of Christ to lead us and guide us over to the next teaching which is going to be assurance of salvation, and we think, we think you're going to really enjoy that as well. Remember, you're the most important person here, because without you we could not teach. And remember, we're learning, so we can teach, and we teach, so we can learn. Thank you, and God bless.